Hello, and welcome to OpenGL Oversimplified. In this video, I want to look at the typical OpenGL workflow of bind and operate, bind and use. Here we have a list, which is defining a bunch of information, and we are sending a message to the graphics card to, where are we? There we are, to generate one buffer. Then we're binding it and working with it, doing some things. See, we have self vertex buffer object is over here, but once it's bound, we just, we're still working on it, but we're just using an alias array buffer. And similarly, up above, we bind this vertex array object, and then we just work as normal. So how does that sort of work? I wanna, I wanna strengthen that mental model. Okay, so before I was saying that our graphics card is an arts department. How does an arts department operate? It doesn't just do one thing. A modern arts department will have several little sub-departments. At least, at least an art studio will have several benches. And that's the analogy that I wanna use here. So before I was talking about storage cabinets for different types of resources. And the two that I want to talk about here are buffers and textures. Why not? I mean, I'm really just going to talk about buffers, but I'm just going to have this as an example. So we have a storage cabinet for all types of buffers and a storage cabinet which stores textures in our art department. And we also have sort of a, a manager or someone who can um, take instructions. And this manager, sort of an artsy type, is sort of French, I guess. I don't know. He's, he's a New Yorker. Hey, pizza, forget about it. Anyway, point is, point is, he's a, he's a ritzy guy and he runs the art department and all commands sort of go through him. So, uh, one command, which is pretty pretty uh, typical, is we might say uh, make space for a buffer. Okay, so we can imagine that we send this command through to the art department. They intercept that. They have a look in their storage cabinet. They do whatever work they need to do to make that. And then they send back a response, three. That's the index of this particular buffer. So if we go into our code and we print out, and we print out self vertex buffer object, it'll print three or zero or 10. It'll print some number. That's just the location. And it means nothing. It's not a VRAM location. The only place where it can be translated is in the arts department is if we tell the manager of the arts department, where is buffer three? They know, we don't know. Anyway, okay. So let's say we wanna do some work with the buffer. So we can send another command and say, put buffer three on the buffer workbench because we have all different types of workbenches. So imagine we have a workbench here where we can lay work out and so on. So the manager goes to the storage cabinet, takes this address three, translates that, gets the memory at that, at that place, puts it out on the buffer workbench. So here it is number three. And similarly, we could have a, a 2D texture workbench. And that could have something bound there as well. Some sort of image texture with some metadata. For instance, this could be texture number two. And examples of metadata could be the minifying magnifying filters, the repeat modes for texture coordinates, um, the MIP map address 
procedure, anything like that. That's fine. So anyway, we have that there. And then another thing we could do is we could say, okay, um, send uh, data to the buffer workbench and then just some numbers, 1.2 and so on. Okay, so the point is that the way this is set up, there's sort of a translation uh, that goes on to access the buffers cabinet. So we put it out on the workbench, which is sort of like a register. It's sort of a, a location which is easier for the machine to access. So when we say send data to that workbench, and the manager says, okay, goes to the workbench and whatever's there, whatever's there, that data gets sent in. So here we have the 0 0.5, 1.2, so on and so on. And then what we can do is whenever we bind a different buffer, this buffer object is sort of, this sort of isn't quite a perfect analogy because it's not like we're taking something out of a cabinet because when you take something out of a cabinet, it's gone from the cabinet. It's more like we have fetched the machine address in VRAM where this object was stored. And then we can work with it here as if it was laid out on a desk. But in reality, it stays inside It stays inside the cabinet the whole time. So then when we fetch another buffer, we don't need to do anything. We just overwrite whatever's on the bench. And that's fine. It just has a reference. Does that even make sense? Anyway, so that was a quickie. Just explaining some of the machinery of binding resources. And yeah. That'll be it for now. Hope you enjoyed. And yeah, have fun. Bye.